Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we are going to talk about diseases affecting the cardiac muscle tissue, also called cardiomyopathy. Those present with a disturbance in the electrical or mechanical functions of the heart but do not include inflammatory diseases, valve disorders, hypertension and other classical heart-related disorders. Cardiomyopathy presents with three different types, the dilated or congestive cardiomyopathy, the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and restrictive cardiomyopathy. Let's go through them one by one, including their clinical presentation, ECG and echocardiography findings, causes, frequency, medications and pathological morphology. In the dilated form of cardiomyopathy, all four chambers of the heart are dilated, which leads to decreased contractility, decreased output, backflow of the blood, and eventually mitral insufficiency. The backflow of blood leads to pulmonary edema, and therefore patients often experience difficulty breathing. Due to the decreased cardiac output, the peripheral tissues are underperfused, which leads to peripheral cyanosis, so bluish discoloration of the skin. In the ECG, we can see a left bundle branch block, and in the echocardiography, we can observe dilation of the left atrium and ventricle, reduced left ventricular ejection fraction, reduced movement of the cardiac walls, and often also thrombi in the ventricles and atria. Causes for this disease are prolonged alcohol abuses, different toxins, viral myocarditis, genetic predispositions due to different mutations, or it might be idiopathic. The mutations in genetic predisposition make up approximately one third of cases and can affect the sarcomere more specifically the actin filaments, the beta-myosin heavy chain, the alpha-tropomyosin or the troponin T. It can also affect the cytoskeleton, here more specifically the delta or beta sarcoglucan, dystrophin or desmin. Also mutations in the nuclear envelope or the mitochondria are possible. Those mutations lead to a defect either affecting the force generation or force transmission necessary for proper function of the heart tissue. Medications used to treat the condition are ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, diuretics and anticoagulants. The disease is occurring in approximately 1 out of 2500 people. The dilation of the chambers you can see in the drawing on the poster. The next type of cardiomyopathy is the hypertrophic type. It presents with hypertrophy of the left ventricle, sometimes also of the right ventricle additionally. This leads to a decreased elasticity of the ventricle and diastole, inhibiting proper filling of the ventricle. Due to the increased pressure and volume overload on the left ventricle, after time mitral insufficiency develops. Patients often do not experience symptoms, but if they do, they are often severe. They might have a decrease in energy, palpitations, syncopes, angina pectoris, arrhythmias, and even sudden cardiac arrest. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is actually the leading cause of sudden death in adolescents and adult athletics. Causes are solely of genetic origin and are due to mutations in the sarcomere. Those can be more specifically in the actin filaments, in the beta-myosin heavy chain, alpha-tropomyosin, troponin T, myosin light chain, troponin 1 or titine. These mutations will lead to a defect in force generation and therefore to a sudden stop of function of the heart. The ECG presents with left bundle branch block and the echocardiography with septal hypertrophy with a wall thickness of over 13 mm. This wall thickness can be asymmetrical. 
This type of cardiomyopathy occurs in approximately 1 out of 500 people, so it is more frequent than the previous type. It is treated with beta blockers and diuretics, however, a cure is not possible in any type of the cardiomyopathies. Pathologically, the heart presents with a marked hypertrophy and a asymmetrically thick septum. Histologically, we can observe myofiber disarray, which means that the muscle fibers are not aligned properly, but appear rather disorganized and also we see fibrosis and thickened septal vessels. In the bottom of the poster, you can see the hypertrophy of the cardiac valve and therefore resulting decrease in the size of the chamber. The last type of cardiomyopathy is the restrictive type. It presents with a decrease of the ventricular elasticity in the time of diastole, but an unimpaired systolic function of the left ventricle. This leads to an impaired ventricular filling and patients will present with heart failure, dyspnea, peripheral edema and tachycardia. In the echocardiography we can observe large atria while usually the size of the ventricles is not affected. Instead, we might see thickening of the ventricle wall. The ejection fraction is usually normal, but with decreased diastolic filling, so the blood expelled in one systole is decreased and the heart has to pump more frequently. Medications usually affect the condition insignificantly and patients require a heart transplant. Some doctors recommend the use of diuretics, ACE inhibitors or anticoagulants for better prognosis, but without a transplantation the prognosis remains poor. Calcium channel blockers are contraindicated in these patients. It can be idiopathic in origin or due to radiation fibrosis, amyloidosis, sarcoidosis, metastatic tumors or due to inborn errors of metabolism. The myocardium is firm, but the size and thickness of the chambers is normal. Histologically, we can observe a patchy or diffuse interstitial fibrosis, and in histological examination by biopsy, we can see disease-specific clues like signs for amyloidosis or sarcoidosis. A last subtype I just want to mention is the arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, or abbreviated ARVD, which is an inherited disease with progressive degeneration of the cardiomyocytes. They are replaced by adipose and fibrous tissue, which, lead, which leads to decrease in electric propagation of signals, ventricular tachyarrhythmia and sudden cardiac arrest. The ventricle walls become thinner and dilated and the patients present with a variable symptomatic profile ranging from exercise-induced ventricular tachyarrhythmia and palpitations to syncope and sudden death. In the ECG we can see an epsilon wave in the end of a prolonged QRS complex and sometimes a right bundle branch block. In the echocardiography, local reduction of wall movement in the right ventricle might be seen, indicating the fatty replacement of the cardiomyocytes. I hope this video was helpful and I would be very happy if you would subscribe to not miss any of our new videos. Thank you very much.